Hello again. If you remember in the last in the last video, we were talking a little bit about ActionScript and how we can use it to dynam dynamically create instances of objects on the stage. What we did was actually prepare all the objects in the library so that we could actually create the ActionScript to dynamically do that. In this video, video, we're actually going to do this and also introduce a concept called the display stack. So what I've done in my example here is I've removed all instances of objects from my uh, from my movie here. Also, if you look at the timeline, I have a single layer called scripts. I've selected the first frame of the scripts layer so I can access the actions panel on the left-hand side. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple new statements in ActionScript to show you how to create an instance of an object that's already been created in the library. If you remember, we have two objects. We have the blue square and we have the circle. Let's use the blue square and create an instance of that on the stage. So the first thing we want to do is use the var statement. What the var statement is going to do is allow us to create a named object that we can then create an instance of and then take that instance and associate it with that name. This is the same thing as giving an instance name to an object when we used the properties panel before. So I'm going to create a var uh, statement and I'm going to call this my blue square. If you notice, again, um, just like we do with the instance name in the first video, we were talking about how we actually have to punctuate and capitalize the different words here. I'm starting with a lowercase my, but then every th word after that I use a capital letter. Again, this is called camel case, and it's a naming convention that's pretty standard when I'm using instance names. So I have var my blue square. I'm going to use the equal sign, which is, if you remember, the assignment operator, and I'm going to create a new blue square. So what this is doing, I'm creating a named object called my blue square, and I'm giving it an instance, or I'm peeling off a stack, uh, a note from that sticky note stack, and I'm giving that object to the name my blue square. So once I've done this, I now have an instance of that blue square object called my blue square. This is exactly the same thing that we did before, except we use drag and drop and flash. Now we're exclusively doing this with ActionScript. So if you remember, when the, in, our, in our first tutorial, we used the trace statement to show that the object was actually there and we could actually script to it. I'm going to use that same convention here using the trace statement. So I'm going to use trace my blue square. Now I'm going to run this. And if you run this, you're going to notice that something unexpected happens. When I run it, in the output panel, I have object blue square. So the object is there, but nothing shows up in the Swift file. That's because we need to access a special container called the display stack. The display stack is a, it, basically all the display stack does, it takes all the different objects that are being shown in the Swift file, and it's a list of everything that's going to be displayed. The display stack, you don't, you have to manually add objects to the display stack. It's not an automatic, uh, automatic function. So what we need to do is actually add this object to the display stack so Flash knows to render it and display it in the Swift file. To do this, we need to use a new command called add child. So what I'm going to do is after my trace statement here, I'm going to create a new line called add child. I'm going to take that instance that I had before, my blue square, and put that into the add child uh, property here. And if you notice, I have to put um, I have to put my blue square uh, inside parentheses, and again I have to end it with a semicolon. Now I'm going to run it again. There. Now the blue square is on here because I've not just created the instance of it, but I've also added it to the display stack. Forgetting to add things to the display stack is a very common error, and I still do it every now and then when I'm, when I'm working with ActionScript. So when you actually it, create an instance of it and it doesn't show up, the display stack is usually the culprit. So let's create a new instance of the blue square, but let's call it my other blue square. So I'm going to create a new var statement here and do my other blue square. I'm going to have that equal a new blue square. Let me just move this over so we can see all the code. There we go. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another one here, another add child statement, add child. I'm going to add my other blue square. 
Now, if you notice, when I run this, it makes it look like there's only one blue square. That's because the default location that it creates an instance is at the coordinate 0, 0. So there actually are two squares here. They're just overlapping each other. If you remember, we were able to modify the x and y coordinates using ActionScript. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the x and y coordinates of the second square so that they're no longer overlapping with each other. So I'm going to do my other blue square dot x, and let's position it at 300. And let me position the y coordinate as well. My other blue square dot y equals, let's say, 150. So I'm going to run this again. And now you'll see I have two instances of that particular object. So if we take a look at the code that we have here, you'll notice that it's pretty cryptic. There are a lot of things in here that we might want to have a little bit more documentation about. What we're going to learn in the next tutorial is how to comment and create more documentation so that when we look at the code, we'll have a very easy way of identifying what's, what's part of this code. So we're going to be doing that in the next tutorial.